So now we are talking about six and a half months. So we only have one third of all the games played in the Premiership. And uh, as you all know, we have also agreed upon a, a two-year uh, advisory role after those six and a half months. And, uh, yeah, and, and in the end, to be honest, if a club like Manchester United contacts you um, for such a role, you cannot possibly turn it down. Ralph Rannick has been Manchester United's manager for what? A few months now. When he came into the club in December, we were we were a club in free fall after an abysmal end to the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer reign. Uh, and there's a lot of frustration going along among United fans right now about our, our lack of results. Not really the performances, not really the chance we're creating, but the results. And what I want to do in this video is explain exactly why Ralph Randick is not the problem. Why we need to talk about Ralph Randick. And it's very important that we do this video and we have this conversation. So please stick around for it. Please, if, again, if I would say, if, if you'd like to subscribe to United People's TV, Go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live. But I really just want to dive straight into this video and dive straight into talking about this man. Because I did a tweet after the game at the weekend there against Watford that got a lot of interest. And I want to follow up on it. And I said, look, I said, I'll tell you one thing. I won't hear a word against Ralph Randnick. Has made this team so much more creative over the last six to eight games. And it's completely on the players. And that's that there that I've, I gave was completely true. 92 shots in total against Watford, Burnley, Southampton and Middlesbrough. And inside those 92 shots, we scored three goals. It is an insane return. And when you look at Manchester United's XG overall in the Premier League over our last 10 games, look where we stack up. Liverpool's sitting atop the tree with Arsenal, who are a team banging form. And who's above City? Manchester United. Only two teams have created, have, have had a better XG than Manchester United inside the Premier League under Ragnick in the last 10 games. And check this stat out as well. Since he became our interim manager, we've created 160 chances in the Premier League. That is the highest of any team in the league. No team has created more chances than us, but plenty of teams have scored more than us. 160 chances created, 20 goals scored. And four more teams have done better than us in the Premier League. But look at though, look at that conversion there from the amount of chances we're making to the amount of goals we're scoring. And taking a look at the XG here, Manchester United are playing so much differently, so much better in terms of chance creation than we were under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And of course, there's a lot of scorn towards this man right now. And I'm not going to isolate scapegoat uh, Ronaldo. I've done a video on Ronaldo already. So we need to talk about Ronaldo because you don't ignore the elephant in the room. Look at these numbers, you know, zero goals, zero assists in all of these games. Fact of the matter is Ronaldo's bang out of form right now. And this is the greatest goal scorer of all time. What is going wrong? Confidence is low. Sure. Finishing is woeful. Absolutely. But what I want you to do now quickly what well, you won't enjoy the next few minutes of this video but we have to do it right because some people are trying to point the finger at this man here and i just i think you're crazy i think you're absolutely crazy let's rewind a couple of months eh? where were manchester united before ralph came in let's look at the last few games of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reign and let's start comparing all right because context is everything in this and look I remember the downfall of Solskjaer. It was, it was horrible to watch. That game against Leicester where we got torn apart. 4-2 at the King Power Stadium. Followed by being 2-0 down at halftime against Atalanta. Only for a second half. Incredible comeback. You're thinking, now these players are still playing for him. Then that game against Liverpool happened four days later. An absolute utter humiliation for Manchester United. For Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. For every single player involved. It was truly an abysmal day. For the club. And if, at that point, I, I, that was when I, after that game, I said, look, I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer needs to be sacked. He wasn't sacked. We waited six days. We beat Spurs 3-0 and then Nuno was sacked. Perfect time to play Spurs. That worked out lovely. Then we got Atalanta away. Again, a game where we were pretty much dominated. A game again where Ronaldo came up with the last minute winner when we needed, sorry, last minute equaliser when we needed him to. Kept us in the Champions League there. Then what happens? Four days later, we go and get torn apart by Man City. And then we had a two-week break. And that two-week break, I remember it. It was woeful. Absolutely woeful. It was inside that two-week break where I started analysing potential replacements for 
Are they going to soul shot? And we, we, we first had the initial conversations about Ralph Rannick before the news came out. And then, of course, we got blown apart away by Watford 4-1. Solskjaer was sacked. Carrick brought in as the interim manager. And I'll tell you what, Carrick did a great job. Two wins and a draw away at, St at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. Carrick really steadied that ship at a time where we needed steadying. And then he handed the reins over to Ralph Rannick, right? And this is where we really had to... Because with me and my opinion on Ralph, I'm so fiercely strong on, on my opinion. I'm pretty damn set. And because for me, it's not just about the football with Ralph. It's the bigger picture. And I want all of us to really focus on the bigger picture. But look, if we're looking at the football itself, that game against Crystal Palace there, immediately we're like, wow, we're pressing. Wow, we're controlling a game. Fred came up with a goal outside the box. You think, oh, great. We're going to win it all under Ralph. No, we didn't think that. But we think, wow, that's a hell of an improvement from, for one game. 11 changes and we drew against young boys. A dead rubber game. Didn't matter. Norwich away. We were lucky to come away with three points there. But we got the three points. Newcastle, you could probably say we were lucky to come away with a draw. Was it Cavani came off the bench? I think it was. Uh, and we got a draw at Stamford Bridge. Poor, but we technically got a result, so it wasn't the end of the world. Beat Burnley 3-1 at Old Trafford. Fine. All right, cool. Improving, improving? No. After New Year, the first game of the season, we lost at home to Wolves, and it was a bad one. It was a bad one. It was at that point we were thinking things could start going a bit sticky, and I think they did. We beat Aston Villa at, in the FA Cup. It wasn't the best performance. And then we dropped a two-goal lead away at Aston Villa. And you're thinking the mentality of this team stinks. And that first half against Brentford, you think, wow, we're bad. Second half turnaround. Then West Ham, brilliant performance. Probably one of the most total performances of the season. And a clean sheet as well. And then this is where it started to get to the frustrating point. After everything that we've had there, all those results, topsy-turvy, some great, some bad, but not very consistent. I would say the one thing that United have been in the last bloody six games is consistent. I'm not saying that in the most positive of sense. Against Middlesbrough, we had so many chances. Could not finish our dinner. Then we had Burnley, the exact same thing. Then we had Southampton, the exact same thing. And Brighton, it felt a little bit frustrating. And of course, that red card changed everything. But we finally got the second goal with the breakaway from Fernandez, And that was in the last bloody minute. We felt like it could be happening again. And they hit the bar and it nearly did. But he didn't. A 2 nil win. And then that game against Leeds. You felt hopefully that's going to be a turning point. We got that really, really important result away at Atletico. And then obviously the nil-nil against Watford. And we find ourselves where we're at right now. And there are quite a few United fans, genuinely, who they are trying to point the finger at Ralph. And I can't, for the life of me, get my head around what you are doing. Do you not see that this man is our it is our, it's not our saviour, but he thinks differently. He works differently. And the fact that he does have that consultancy position, which I, we need that to be formalised into something bigger and better, because as I'm going to show next, it's the reason I was always so excited about Ralph Radnick wasn't because of the, of the gag and pressing system and the football he was going to bring. He's an interim manager. His job was only to steady the ship between now and the end of the season. The thing I was so excited about was the effect and the impact he was going to have on this. Now, this is a graphic that was made by The Athletic a while ago, and I still might do a separate video on it entirely. But this here, this is the tree that he is going to come and shake up. And this is why he's got to have the absolute support of fans. All right? Even if we're doing frustrating nil-nils against Watford, and we are, and we're frustrating draws against Burnley and Southampton, and we are. Is that down to Ralph? No. As Ralph said, his job as a coach is to make sure that this team creates chances. Whose job is it to score those chances? It's Bruno's. It's Ronaldo's. It's Cavani when he decides he wants to play. The attackers have to become so much more efficient because as the stats show, nobody... Actually, no, sorry. Liverpool and Arsenal are the only two teams who should be scoring more goals than us in the Premier League right now on form. That's how good we're creating chances. When it comes to finishing them, that's a whole different ball game. But going back to this hierarchy, this is it. At the moment, we all know that Glaze is at the top and Arnold is underneath. And we're, we fear what that means. But Ralph Rannick is over here on the left-hand side at the moment. He's there with Ewan Sharp, Sasha Lense, Chris Armas and Mike Phelan. They're his coaching staff with Justin Cochrane underneath as the head of first team development. But what we need, what I'm excited about is Ralph moving from this side of the tree over to this side. And this is what we have to get right. And this is where the true change can come for Manchester United. I don't know where Ralph will sit. 
I hope he sits just above John. I imagine it probably will be split along so him and John Murto work alongside each other, maybe in separate sides of the footballing department. We're speaking with, I um, can't remember his name. Uh, what's his, the guy who worked with Pochettino. Anyway, he's uh, AS Monaco's sporting director. Paul Mitchell. There you go. 10 points. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyway, back to the video. Um, John Murto, I hope will sit a little bit underneath Ralph Rangnick, but this is where this is why I'm this is why I will staunchly defend Ralph Rangnick and why I won't get caught up and swept away in a frustrating nil-nil draw or a frustrating one-all draw because they're not the sorts of draws that we saw under Louis Van Gaal, are they? Jeez, we should just be, we should be winning them all by like two, three, four goals. And if at some point that penny will drop, at some point we're going to spank a team four nil. Probably won't come in the next few games though. Jeez, not who we got coming up. But I'm so excited to see what happens when Ralph moves from that side of the tree to this side of the tree. Would he be given the power? We don't know. But that is why I'm so. I I personally won't listen to any criticism really that comes towards Ralph Rannick. You can try and focus on starting 11s that he gets wrong. Or you can try and argue that his subs aren't impactful, but, you know, Elanga scoring and Fred scoring away at Leeds, they probably will disagree with you on that one. But I want to know where you stand. I want to know what you feel and think about Ralph Randick right now. Because in my opinion, I think it's a mute point trying to criticise him. I really genuinely do. He is, he's got his eye on this, on what's coming next. And he always has. He always says the right things. He's extremely honest in how he approaches himself. And I like what I'm seeing. I like the fact that, look, that we're creating, boom, we're creating more chances than anybody in the Premier League since he came in. The fact that we're not scoring as many is because we've got players bang out of form, not because Ralph Rannick is doing his job wrong. And as I said on Twitter here, I just personally won't hear a word against Ralph. And I really want to know where you stand on this one. I feel pretty passionate and pretty strong for the fact that this man is our greatest chance of modernizing, truly modernizing our football club and trying to play catch-up, proper catch-up, with the likes of Liverpool and City, if he's given, as we know, the proper autonomy to work and have power inside this tree. Where would that be? Hopefully somewhere just above John Murtaugh, but we don't know what that is yet. We won't know that until the summer, and of course we won't know who's going to come on this left-hand side to replace him as manager, hopefully Eric Ten Hag. But I want to know where you stand on the Ragnik situation. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Do you think he does deserve criticism? Do you really feel like I do that he's he can be the man that really truly changes our club? Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below because I think it's truly time that we properly talked about Ralph Ragnick. And I'm not speaking about him taking the job on a permanent basis. I don't really think that will happen. But I'm seeing plenty of criticism aimed towards him. I just think it's plain wrong. I want to know where you stand on that. You let me know in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe if you're new.